how many mothers like I know that, you know, it's like when you have to take responsibility and take care of yourself, right? It's one level of business and responsibility. Then when you become responsible for your child, one, two, three, it's a completely different thing. You know, you like, you don't have time for yourself until your kids go to bed like in like eight, nine, and then you are so exhausted and you just want to just crash, right? And especially like if single mothers, I'm thinking, or single, you know, parents, gender doesn't really matter. Like, but you solely responsible for your children and you have to make it through the day and take care of them. And you don't, usually they, you know, we try to um, don't show our stress right and don't project our stress on our children right keep it to ourselves but it's such a load uh that eventually will play out you know we want it or not it it is there and it's gonna show up but through the physical symptoms already because the body kind of doing this you know heavy lifting here with all these feelings that have been suppressed for so long and it wants attention and it doesn't have any other way to get attention as through creating pain for us. I wonder if, if that's a result of, because when you have a child from the, the parents I speak to, they're taking on some of that burden from the child because the child doesn't know until they're old enough to know. Right. Mm -hmm. So as you mm -hmm. mentioned, they're, they're splitting it and they went from taking care of themselves. So now they're taking care of another person. So the load has increased. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if you have a child raised between two parents where the load can be distributed equitably, not equally, right. But equitably versus let's say a single parent who's struggling to maintain the load of the household parenting, being themselves as well as working that's a lot just for two shoulders and i think maybe maybe that's where the disconnect is because they're trying to do everything at once and i find that a lot of mothers specifically now will put themselves on the back burner for their family in that regard mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i think i think i think you're right and It's, it's a hard, hard place to be. And I think we still need to do a lot of work to support those women. And I would love society, to see society doing a better job as, you know, providing this support that single mothers need. But what happens often is that, you know, mothers feel like they have to sacrifice everything they have in order to raise the children. Where they healing usually happens is that when we prioritize ourselves our needs and we show up as better mothers usually when we take care of our physical and emotional needs at least that was my experience like we, we're getting close to my third depression here <laughs> uh, but that was my third depression was postpartum depression uh, and my first year postpartum was so horrible. And I, again, it was grief again. I was grieving the previous version of myself, right? The previous life that I had without the baby where I had all the time I wanted for myself and I could do whatever I wanted. And I felt, I felt in control of my life. And then when you have a baby, you're like, you don't belong to yourself at all. Like, who cares what kind of needs you have? You don't have time to go pee or, you know, take a shower. Like, basic needs, they gone. And it's so hard to actually get back to, oh, but, like, I have needs too. And I have to find a way to address them if I want to be a good mother. So that was my struggle. I had to find a way how to start paying attention to what I want, what I need, and how to find a small ways here and there, you know, but give myself what I need. I wonder if I, if I look back on, because you and I look like we're relatively close to the same age. If I look back, let's say two generations ago, where mm -hmm. raising a child was something that was more family centric and more community based. You essentially didn't do it yourself, right? 
if I look at that, how at least in my culture, there's always what we would call like big mama and grandfather, where they would help out almost equally to what the parents would do for the child. So you had, let's say, four or more people raising the child, right? So everyone, so let's say, for example, if you weren't able to do certain tasks of parenthood, you at least had the father, you had the grandmother, you had the grandfather, but you had two sets, right? So you had a total of six people helping out. And now where I look at more and more people are having children outside of marriage, or maybe not including other family members, there's probably, they're un, they're not evenly yoked, mm-hmm. right? Because there's always going to be one person who's going to take on more responsibility in the household. And I think parenthood gets discounted because a lot of men will take on the task of, I'm going to be the provider of making the home a home. And the woman's going to be the um, organizer and the navigator of the home inside, right? Everyone has their responsibility. But what happens now is if one person feels that the load is too great, where's the support for that? Right? Because you can't go to the other person and say, sometimes you feel like you can't go to the person and say, can you do a little bit more and I do a little bit less? Unless you have the, that communication. And I think that's probably what's truly missing between the two people when it comes to raising a child. It's always, I'm going to do my thing. You're going to do your thing. Cross our fingers and we hope for the best. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that's where your marriage and your relationship and your communication skills being tested. 